Good morning, evening, and afternoon. I am the professional killer, and in this video, I'm going to be covering some tips that I wish I knew before I started grinding towards Onyx. If you're new here, then welcome to the channel. I upload daily Halo content and have more tips and guides on my channel. If you want to elevate your gameplay, then be sure to check out my channel after this video. If you'd like to chat with me and ask me any other Halo related questions, you can catch my live streams here on YouTube and Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday. Links to all my socials are down below. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The very first tip, grab every single weapon when you see it. Every weapon in Halo Infinite has strengths and is viable, except for the Disruptor. Just don't grab that. Having a secondary weapon is vital to surviving and maximizing your overall kill count. It's much faster to swap to a second weapon than it is to wait on any of the reload animations to complete. The next tip, dropping your weapon instead of swapping it. If you go into your settings screen and scroll down, you will find an option to toggle for drop weapon. Toggle this to whatever hotkey is easier for you to use in the middle of a gunfight. Instead of swapping to your second weapon, it is quicker to drop your current weapon. The weapon swap causes an extra animation as you must put your current gun away and then pull up your second gun. Dropping the weapon immediately brings up your second gun as your current weapon is just thrown out of your hands, allowing you to get that last headshot off much quicker. Third tip, grabbing power weapons. We are primarily focusing on the spanker here. Some of you may notice that when you pick up the spanker, it seems like it takes forever to fire that first rocket. That's because the spanker has its own animation when being picked up for the very first time. This animation plays regardless of if you grab it off the power weapon stand or off the ground. So make sure that you are not being pushed by an enemy as you are left vulnerable for a brief period of time. The fourth tip, the grappler. The grappler will yoink power weapons, items, and the enemy flag to you. See someone going for that overshield, yoink. See the enemy flag in a bad position, stand behind a wall, and yoink it to you. Note, the grappler will not yank the flag off of the stand. The flag must be off the stand before you can actually grab it. Fifth tip, do not walk with the flag or the ball. This might be beneficial in lower rankings, but once you progress higher, all it's going to do is make it all that more difficult to capture the flag or hold a position to gain points. The only exception for walking with the flag is if you have active camo. Note, active camo does not hide the ball carrier. You are still visible, so do not grab the ball with active camo. Utilize the active camo to kill the enemy team. Tip number six is going to capitalize off the last tip. Learn to juggle the flag and the ball. Go into custom games by yourself, grab the flag, grab the ball, and juggle it around the map. But Mr. Killer, the point of an oddball is to hold the ball, not drop it. Huh. I know, little Timmy, but to get the ball to a power position, you need to move it ASAP. That means juggle it. To juggle it, it's all about timing. Make sure maintain sprint is on. This will ensure that you don't have to press the sprint button repeatedly over and over. Sprint, grab the flag, jump, switch weapons, grab the flag, jump, switch weapons, and repeat over and over and over. When you switch your weapons, it makes your Spartan throw the flag, and then of course you pick it back up and continue the process. Tip number seven, you do not have to hold the flag. Let's say your team is fighting to return your flag back to base. Some enemy is going to push you at some point to try and regain their flag. Just drop the flag. As long as you are in the circle, it cannot be returned. You can even leave the circle for a little to help your team. You can leave the flag by itself for about 24 seconds before it is auto returned. So take advantage of that. Once you hit like the 22 second mark, you need to step back in the circle to guarantee that you have the flag. Tip number eight, the repulsor. The repulsor repels grenades and rockets away from you. By using the repulsor, you can also repel your own grenades and make them detonate almost immediately. The grenade timer doesn't start until it contacts a surface. So take advantage of this by looking down, throwing your grenade and then repulsing it. 
the grenade will travel a short distance away from you and explode. This is great for choke points and doesn't give your opponent any time to react to it. Tip number nine. Still with the repulsor here. Look to the ground, jump, and repulse at the same time, and it will launch you high up into the sky. This can be used as shortcuts to get around the map. It can also really throw off your enemy if you're in a gunfight and launch up. Just be aware that it does make you an easier target if someone is further away, as you have very limited mobility and cannot avoid gunfire. Tip number 10, shooting grenades. Regular grenades and plasma grenades will explode when they are shot. They can be detonated by shooting them when they are lying on the ground or if they are floating on their grenade spawn. Note, dynamo and spike grenades must be physically activated before they can detonate, meaning that even if you shoot them lying on the ground or on their spawns, they will not explode. Be aware of random grenades lying around the map and use them to your advantage. If your enemies are behind cover and you are unable to get a direct line of sight for your weapon, observe the area to see if there are any random grenades that can be shot. Not only can this result in some very easy damage and possibly kills, but it can force your opponent to relocate as they see an explosion near them. Tip number 11, crouch jumping. If you crouch when you jump, it allows you to reach higher places without having to mantle. Combine a crouch jump while sprinting and it allows extremely fast and fluid movement around areas of the map. To perform a sprinting crouch jump, while sprinting, jump and then hold your crouch button. This makes your Spartan lift their feet and it avoids having to trigger a mantle. This is hugely beneficial as mantling leaves you extremely exposed and unable to shoot your weapon. This can also help you escape if you find yourself in a bad position. To consistently crouch jump, it relies on timing. So practice this by going into the training modes and just running around the map. Tip number 12, the AI scan. The AI scan highlights every interactable object. This means if it is something you can pick up, it will be highlighted, even if that object is behind a wall. It will show grenades, utility items, and power weapons if they are readily available to be picked up on their spawn. However, it will not show if a weapon rack has the weapon available as it only highlights the box, not the timer. The AI scan can be beneficial to use in some situations. If there was an engagement over a power weapon or item and that object is dropped, it can be much easier to locate that object by using the AI scan. That's it for this video. Please hit that like button if it's helped you out as it helps me out. And also check out my channel for more tips and guides. I'll see you in the next one. Happy slaying. That is mine. What the f I said it's mine. I'll take that.